Hey guys, we're putting the. <laughs> I am faking putting the foil board together for this video. <laughs> Today we are going to try foil boarding. Not sure how much wind there is right now, um, so we're just putting the board together very, very slowly. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna put the kite up and hopefully there will be enough, um, but you'll see either way. So yeah, let's do it. It's pretty light right now, maybe at best 10 knots, but it doesn't even feel like it's that. Uh, and I've also got the foil board here. So yeah, now we just gotta body drag out a bit and give it a shot. <laughs> It'll be my first time foiling at Kipling with my tall mass. So hopefully, hopefully I don't swim today, but you never know. Wasn't enough wind, so I ended up swimming. Ended up on the rocks here where you can see all this lovely rebar that's like embedded in concrete. When you have like a million bridles and it all gets tangled in these tiny pieces of rebar on your brand new kite, it's like stressful times. But all of them. All right, this is take number two with the 15 meter. Wish me luck. And I'm swimming. So I'm back on shore right now. We are being a little bit too eager. It's just not enough wind right now, so we're gonna wait it out. After waiting on the beach for a bit, the wind picked back up, so I decided to give the foil board another shot. I wasn't overly concerned with foiling right away. In fact, I was comfortable with just riding on the board in the water to get the feel for it again. One really big difference with the tall mass is just the overall weight of the board. The board itself isn't that floaty, so it was sinking a bit in the water. This made getting going really hard at first. At this stage, you learn just how important kite control really is. After riding back and forth for a few tacks with the board on the water, I started to foil a bit, but then I also started to bail pretty bad. <laughs> Guri of course picked it up right away and made it look super easy. I enjoyed watching him, even though I was a little jealous, while I took a break on the shore. <laughs> Very nice. All right, so I've been struggling on the foil board and now I just took out Fred's flying carpet. This thing is huge and the stance is like super wide, uh, but it's still barely enough wind for 15, barely. Uh, made it back to the beach where I started. So yeah, uh, I think I'm just gonna wait it out for a little bit. When Yuri came back from his foil session, I decided to give it another shot to see if I can improve my skills and match his progress. It was definitely a day for foil boarding. As you can see, all the kiters were on big foil kites and foil boards. A few of the local kiters were out. Here's Nikita, Fred, and Lucas. At this point, the wind was still pretty light, but at least it was consistent and the water was nice and calm. I was finally starting to get the hang of it. I wasn't always boiling, but I felt much more in control and my bills weren't so bad. So foiling today went pretty well. Um, at first it was a little bit tricky. It was definitely an adjustment getting used to the tall mast. Um, and I struggled at first because the wind was pretty light, but then the wind picked up a bit more and I was actually foiling for a bit, which was fun on the tall mast. Um, it was feel, feels really cool when you're like super high up, when you're kind of maxing out on the mast. Um. <laughs> you gotta secure some real estate. Let's hurry up. On Sunday, Yuri and I took turns on Nikita's 18 meter kite with our foil board. This day I had a much better experience, partly because we just had better wind in general. It wasn't just us learning to foil, our friend Anna was out for the first time on her foil board, a CRX, with a smaller trainer mast. The smaller mast is a great way to go when beginning because it's easier for water starts and the bills aren't so epic. It also lets you practice in shallower water, which can be helpful too. Then Sasha showed up with his 18 meter Sonic 2 and seemed to be having a great time. He offered me the kite to try and I couldn't say no. Turn my woo on, hopefully I'll get some good jumps. But uh, the wind's a little light, so we'll see.
While Anna and I continued kiting, the guys were kind of busy on the beach. It's a side landing, it's called, you know? I'm the best lander. This is how you land a fly surfer at Kipling, in the trees. That way, they don't blow away. It's all the way out there. Hey guys, it is Friday after work and I am about to go foil boarding. The wind just picked up. I'm on my 12 meter fly surfer sole and I'm gonna put to use all that practice that I did a few days ago. Um, so yeah, let's, let's give it a shot. Make sure I remembered what I'm actually doing. <laughs> Hey guys, today I'm going to attempt jumping on a foil board for the first time ever. I'm going to get a quick lesson from Nikita first though because I really have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> you gain some speed, do what you normally do with a kite, and uh, just before you're about to take off, put a lot of uh, pressure on the back foot so you get uh, a bit of a lift. What I found is that jumping on a foil board isn't that much different than jumping on a twin tip. While I was doing that, Nikita was working on his back rolls and front rolls on the foil board, which was just so crazy to watch. No laughing. This is like my third try. On the foil. Have you tried foil boarding? If so, what are you looking at improving? Personally, I know I should probably hold up on the jumps for now and attempt transitions. Let me know in the comments below what you're up to and how you're finding foil boarding so far. 